My name's Robert Servey. I've been a client of Able Link for quite a number of years. I was history. born with low vision. I've only got about 30% uh, vision. I'm uh, totally deaf in one ear and have managed to make my way through life with both of those problems reasonably well, I might say. Yeah. Uh, approximately 32 years in the workforce, working front reception, uh, general office duties. I then moved off to the public service for a while, doing similar sorts of work. And I found that at least being able to mix in the community was certainly good for my esteem and it made me a better and rounded person. And I'm grateful for the opportunity of at least having had a bit of time in the workforce. I've decided that uh, at the ripe old age of 53, I decided that it was time to put the feet up a little bit and I was quite enjoying retirement until my mother had uh, what they call a TI, which is a mini stroke. I've now become a full-time carer and I've become very domesticated, as in washing, cooking, cleaning and all that sort of stuff. And uh, to tell you the truth in one respect, uh, it wasn't a good thing to have to go through, but on the other hand, it's very handy being able to cook for oneself and being able to at least keep house for oneself. I love my technology because technology is great because Firstly, being vision impaired, I don't get a chance to read the newspaper, nor do I want to these days. I'd rather read the ABC online, and you can pick up all the stories you like there. Alternatively, if you want a bit of social intercourse, you can go onto Twitter, and whether you get into an argument or whether you get into a general discussion, that's totally and utterly up to you. As far as the rest of technology goes, I find that if I want anything in the sense of my grocery shopping, I run into the problem of having a the problem of getting everything home once I've got my trolley full. Uh, I'd either have a long wait for a taxi or alternatively uh, they just weren't around for a long time or uh, they had to carry the stuff home which got rather heavy. So I decided to investigate online shopping. Well, I found the best piece of software was the one that Coles run. It works very nicely on an, old, on an iPad. I found that the Woolworths one is a bit of a problem on my iPad, so I've stuck with Coles, so I can go through there and I can order anything that you can find in a coal shop. It comes out to my place nice and cool, and within a slotted period, I then just pick it up from the driver, it goes straight into my fridge. Makes life very easy. I've also found that there are an awful lot of other companies that want to do online shopping now too, in the sense of some of the electrical retailers, if you want product, You've only got to go and look for the product and uh, a lot of the companies will, as I said, allow you to buy online. The only difficulty is that if it's something that you want to see, you've got the problem in that you can't actually go touch it, you can't feel it, you can't uh, go and say, is this exactly the right size of working out? For instance, if they say a fridge is a certain height, uh, you've more or less got to look and say, mm, now is that right? You know, what is it really? rather than if you can go there and put a hand on it, you say, oh yes, it really is this height, and you can equate that with the place you want to put it. Yeah. Um. Coles have a delivery charge of approximately $14 per delivery. Now, if you want to avoid that, you need to spend $150 a week on food. Uh, but uh, the shop prices the catalogue prices and the online prices are pretty much the same. Uh, I find that what I do is to get around it. I might order something like cat food. I might order an abundance of it one week and then something else the next week like house cleaner. And that way you're not ordering a great big lot of stuff that you're not going to use and you just try and spread the wear like that. Or alternatively you order a bit of fruit extra and you'll eat that. I love my online banking and I think it's one of the greatest things ever invented. I can go pay bills, I can check my account balances, I can transfer money and it all works beautifully from an iPad. Yeah. So, so my days of using a laptop are disappearing. I would say now the only reason I use my laptop is to print. I'm actually thinking about it. I decided to update my kitchen suite and 
went looking and I was quite surprised by the amount of variety that I could find online and the styles and many places actually deliver. But again, it's like I was saying before with the fridge as an example, you do like to actually go see the product, you do like to go feel the product and you do like to pick it up so that you can see what it's actually like rather than just having a look at the picture because if you get a picture obviously, oh yes that looks good, uh, by the time it gets home it might weigh a tonne and you have trouble moving it. Yeah, yeah. Not quite. I have many. <laughs> I use uh, Metro Notify yep. because that tells me when my train line's likely to be screwed up or impacted. Yep. And that's very helpful. The other thing with that is I wish they'd take my suggestion on and actually publicise the time of the next train on it. I think that would be terribly helpful. Yep. The other apps that I use, I use iView with the ABC quite mm -hmm. a bit because if you miss something like the 7.30 report, which is, uh, I suppose I'm relying on it because it's audible, but uh, you can actually catch up on the program rather than having missed any information that it might want to give you. Yeah. Uh, I've also found that the uh, taxi ones are not bad either. Whilst I haven't used Uber, I've experimented with it in the sense of seeing whether there are vehicles around in my area and uh, say 95% of the time there are. I think that would be a great thing if the rest of the taxi association would do something similar so that at least you knew before you put a booking in, oh yeah, there are a few cabs around here, I've got a chance of getting one. Yeah. Yes, I uh, find it very handy when I'm exercising and things like that because you can just sit the phone in the pocket and put, or put the ears on and you do your exercises and you're listening to music quite comfortably and if you get bored with what you're listening to in Australia, who cares? You can go and find a station anywhere else in the world. Yeah. I've done that before this too. You can listen to the cricket in New Zealand. Uh, that, <laughs> that. But I've also found that um, I like country and western music. And you don't hear a lot of it on Australian radio. You go searching though, there are plenty of country and western stations over in the States. You plug in and away you go. Yep. I just wish that the PTC would do something with the smart buses now. I think it would be a great idea if they invented an app that you could be sitting in the smart bus and it could tell you what the next stop is right along every route rather than relying on the verbal one that's around now because firstly if you're hearing impaired you're not going to hear it if you're sight impaired you're not going to see it and uh, that leaves alone the fact that sometimes the drivers turn it off yeah. now it would be great as I said if uh, there was some form of app invented so that uh, people got this information on their devices as they were travelling along.